This Side of Paradise, 1920, is a semi-autobiographical novel by American author F. Scott Fitzgerald. Considered a quintessential work of the jazz age, the novel follows Amory, an impulsive young man who squanders his college education at Princeton and recklessly falls in love with a girl from the South. Amory's hedonistic lifestyle reflects the broader spirit of America's capitalist exuberance in the 1920s up until the Great Depression. The two-part novel, one of only a few works Fitzgerald published during his short life, comprises a vivid characterization of young white men's attitudes of entitlement as they sought new ways to use their privilege to shape their lives. The first part of the novel, The Romantic Egoist, begins with Amory's formative years in the early 1900s. He is born into a rich and highly educated family, including his mother, Beatrice Blaine, who pampers him through his childhood. They exoticize the parts of the world that are foreign to them and use their money to travel and learn. As Amory ages, he becomes unruly and demanding. His chronic disobedience nearly drives his mother mad. After she suffers a breakdown, she sends him to her friend Monsignor Darcy, who runs a Catholic church. Amory matures somewhat as he ages, though he is still unable to see beyond the boundaries of his privileged life. As a teenager, he attends many parties, meeting a girl named Myra, with whom he has his first kiss. He visits Beatrice, finding that her alcoholism has worsened, causing her mental health to deteriorate. Eventually, Amory switches schools to St. Regis, a prep school in Connecticut. He is reluctant to leave behind his friends to enter a more stringent institution. Nevertheless, he makes new friends and is accepted to Princeton in the spring of his senior year. At Princeton, Amory becomes friends with Byrne and Carrie Holiday and Tom Dinvilliers, an aspiring poet. Partly inspired by Tom, he begins writing poetry himself. Meanwhile, World War I begins, and Amory's father dies. During Christmas of his sophomore year, he goes to reunite with Monsignor Darcy. Darcy talks him out of leaving Princeton to pursue a creative life outside of academia. Several months later, Amory is drafted to fight in the war. Byrne, now his best friend, refuses out of principle to fight and dodges his draft, disappearing without any hint as to his destination. The second installment, The Education of a Personage, begins near the end of Amory's time at Princeton. Amory falls for Rosalind Connage, the sister of his roommate, Alec. Alec and Rosalind's parents match the two, but Rosalind is not interested, focused on her affection for Gillespie, a rich suitor. At a party, Amory asks Rosalind to feign love for him, she agrees in order to please him, but soon leaves him. Amory realizes that love cannot grow out of coercion or unreciprocated desire. He grows depressed and begins to dull his woes with alcohol. His friends and superiors become concerned that he is unable to remain sober, and Amory considers killing himself. Amory receives a letter from Monsignor Darcy, which pulls him momentarily out of his depression. He goes to visit him back in Maryland, where he encounters a young woman named Eleanor. They quickly become infatuated with each other, but soon realize that their relationship is grounded in lust. They reflect on the irony of the romantic affairs of their young age, which seem to be always incomplete or naive. Towards the end of this side of paradise, Amory's memory of Rosalind begins to wane. Just as he has recovered from the heartbreak, he happens upon a newspaper column announcing Rosalind's engagement to a man named Ryder. Amory agonizes endlessly at the seeming unfairness of life. However, this time, instead of falling into despair, he recognizes his own insignificance and contingency in the universe's scheme. He newly understands the virtues of compassion and respect, which forge connections between seemingly incompatible people and dreams. As the novel closes, Amory has undergone a complete transformation of self. Now, acutely aware of the universality of human suffering, he muses that the only thing he can possibly know is himself. This side of paradise, through Amory's journey from arrogance to humility, anticipates the eventual discontents of 1920s America that Fitzgerald was embedded in, suggesting that it, too, would have to learn to examine its reflection. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.